Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Adventure Mode. I'm Dustin, alongside me, the most glorious changer, Brandon Duncan. What's going on, my dude? Hey Dustin. How are you? I'm doing well today. I'm liking that shirt, Thank just you. right off the bat. I want to get it out of the Fantastic. way. Fantastic. Yingling, you America's know? oldest brewery. Wow. Wow. 10 out of 10. It's so close, I want to visit it. I don't know if they do tours. Oh, they probably most definitely. I mean... Any kind of big brewery, big or small brewery, they can make money off tours and sell merchandise and Man. build that brand loyalty to the Yingling brand. Fantastic. Now, I've been um, thinking about purchasing one. I believe they have some sort of merch site. Mm -hmm. And I stopped over to the local Goodwill to find some t-shirts, see if I could find any cool snags. Yeah. And your boy... Got two beer shirts. There was a two. lot. There was a. I don't know if it's just the area we live. Maybe it's like oh, yeah. representative of that. But there were a lot of fucking beer shirts. Well, like, what was the other one? Uh, I I got a Dosakis one. I've never actually had Dosakis. Yeah, I'm sure I'd Isn't like it. it. Dosakis. Dosakis. Okay. Douche Saki. Douche Saki. Yeah, that's um, right. And there were lots of Budweiser ones. Oh, of course. Lots yeah. of Budweiser. Um, no. It's like I don't want to. I don't want a shirt that says piss water on it. Right. I, okay. Is Budweiser still called America? Uh, I or was think, that just in the summer? I, yeah, or something? I think that was like promotional for the summer. That's but, dumb. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't. I mean, say what you want about current state of America, but it's better than Budweiser. <laughs> okay. Don't compare right. the two. Yeah, and you're cutting in on like um, I believe there's a beer that's literally called like American Light or something like that. Oh so yeah. You, you're kind of cutting in cutting on, in on them. cutting in on that turf. Yeah. So if you didn't know already, this is Adventure Mode. This is your weekly gaming podcast from HandsomePhantom.com. And uh, we're happy to be here, hanging out. We're going to talk about some video games and uh, jag around a little bit. Everyone loves a little jagging around. Brandon, we had a live show. A couple jags on the on the, on the the camera right now. Yeah, we had, we had a live show just the other day, which is going to be a bonus episode coming up this week. I don't know what day we're going to release it yet. Probably mid midweek between episodes, so there'll be a little bonus in there trickled in. We did a nice live show with uh, a special guest, Day Bracey. Yeah, yeah, he's a super cool dude. Um, it was this really awesome podcast event we were a part of, and it was a lot of fun. Um, we've done one other live podcast before, and it's always uh, surprising how different it feels. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've been doing this for so long, and not like I'm, I'm incredibly comfortable, but I am incredibly comfortable, because mm -hmm. we've done hundreds of episodes, right? Um, so, uh, I don't know. It's just way different doing it live. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is like, it's not like we were... Um, I don't want to paint the wrong impression on everybody. It was a live show, but like it was in the brewery and it was fun. And there was definitely some people listening, but a lot of it was people just there eating and yeah. were just like blabbing about, you know, uh, twisted metal. <laughs> and uh, so, no, but it was a fun, a fun time. And it was super cool to do that. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that episode will be coming out at some point this coming week. So look forward to it. Yeah. Brandon, I released a video last Friday. That uh, I, I want to shout that. out to everybody. It's Let's about it's about some games on the Wii U that we need ported over to Switch. Isn't that funny to think about? The one of the points I make in the video is when Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, they were like, "Oh great, this thing's going to be a Wii U port machine. They're just yeah. going to port all these games from Wii U to this." And here we are, and we haven't had very many. They haven't even like Virtual Console or anything, man. They yeah, and it, it's it's been kind of quiet. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing is that I was like, I'm totally fine. Bring over some of these Wii U yeah, games. Yeah, for sure. Um, spoiler alert, one of them, Smash. Of course. Obviously. I was really hoping they did the uh, Nintendo World Championships a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. or maybe it was a, couple, a week ago at this point. But uh, no uh, Smash announcement. Nothing like that. I was hoping for maybe a little tease. Something. I don't know, man. I, I feel like they're just... I don't know what they're saving it for, but they're saving it for something. Yeah. I would say, because that's like, when I think about what games I would want to play, it's like Mario Kart and that. That's mm -hmm. almost it, honestly. Like, if I had to pick two Nintendo games, it would be probably Super Mario, or, you know, Mar Mario Kart and that, so. You know, uh, January is usually a big time for a Nintendo Direct, mm -hmm. and I'm willing to bet that right, maybe January is the time that we get that, especially, like, Mario Odyssey has had its time What's in the spotlight, and everyone has their switches from Christmas. I was saying, Time to tell them what to look forward maybe to. Maybe they're trying to set up for the next holiday season at that point. You know, they're saying, hey, this is what's coming. Holiday. Yeah. 2018. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's still up in the air whether or not they will do a Switch version. Yeah. Or whether or not it will be a different version that's like the Wii U version. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for Switch, so... 
it's still up in the air. What's going to happen? I don't know. But uh, that's definitely one I would I would really, really like to have. So uh, anyway, if you didn't know already, I mentioned this is from handsomephantom.com. We've got tons of articles. Uh, specifically, the one that comes to mind, Platted That, for Diablo 3 is out. And uh, getting some some real gangbusters on those numbers. So if you uh, if you like platinum platinum wait platinuming platinuming games, <laughs> make sure to go to Handsome Phantom as well as we had a review for Star Fox Two from our friend Phil, and a special community editorial. Wow. Brandon, did you see this? Fantastic from our friend J T Russell. Grand Turismo is great, just the way it is. Talks about Grand Turismo, a lot of stuff that I know nothing about because I Good don't news. know shit about Grand Turismo. I knew he was a big fan of the series, and I keep seeing him on playing it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. I'm really excited. Yeah, he actually, I called him on the phone uh, just the other day, and he was saying it was funny because um, he wrote that before the demo, and he was saying how a lot of the game needs to stay the same. Yeah. And it's very different. So, <laughs> Dang uh, it. yeah, it's kind of kind of interesting. I actually, it might be a good idea, JT, if you did some kind of like follow up piece, maybe. Maybe after the game comes out. And then you could put like in parentheses, updated. Updated. Whoa. So, yeah, make sure to check out handsomefam.com. All right, Brandon, let's move on to the first segment. That's right. Name that review score. It's back. It's part of the show we talk about the review scores of games. Over on opencritic.com, play a little game uh, guessing about the review scores of games coming out. Always a fun time. Brandon, there's a, so a couple games. We, we talked a little bit last week about Evil Within 2, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, we Did we guess on Evil Within 2? We did. We and, did, okay. And, and we guessed the same score again. Uh, we did guess the same. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. Remember, we agreed oh. to, to change the points. That's right. And uh, Brandon, that may have been your downfall there. So we guessed on Evil Within 2. Let's go over the scores real quick. Uh, you had guessed an 86 and then I guessed an 84, and that was, we both originally guessed 86, mm -hmm. and you, I said, I will knock this down by two points. Do you agree to that? And you said yes. Well, Brandon, final score is 79. Wow. Point for Duddy. Brandon, this brings me up to 16, and you're at, uh, <laughs> you're at nine. Still plenty of games this year. You can still turn it around, Brandon. I, I promise. There's you a can, lot of time. You could do it. Uh, so even within two, let's talk about that. 79. Um, you know, it's interesting. Some of the things I've heard about the game, first of all, one of the weirdest things to me is, uh, no PS4 pro support. Hmm. Isn't that weird? It definitely is interesting. Cause I feel like Bethesda has, haven't they? Oh yeah. Well, there's been, Bethesda has been interesting about PS4 pro support in general because they, uh, released Prey, and it said it had PS4 Pro support on the box, and it didn't. Like it was like almost oh, false advertising. Yeah. Now, granted, they patched it in later, and it yeah. was kind of piss poor, not that great Pro support, from my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, uh, not not very good Pro support. And now, so we have Evil Within Two, not a peep about Pro support, and it doesn't seem to be launching with any. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get some in a patch. Maybe. Maybe. Brandon, what do you think about this? Is it okay? Um, I don't know. I don't feel like every game needs to have pro support. Maybe that's because I don't have one. I don't know what all it involves to do that sort of thing, but especially if more console, like the Scorpio is coming out, um, you know, like mm -hmm. I would think that that's something that's not going away. So I don't know why they would shy away from it because I feel like it's just going to get more and more popular to have this sort of thing in games. Um, it already is. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't directly affect me because I don't have a, a pro, so I'm not super upset about it. So mm -hmm. uh, A couple of things I want to call that I think is interesting. I just keep noticing this. Uh, the low, two lowest scores are 60 out of 100. And of course, one of them is Slant Magazine. You've heard me talk about sl they, Slant seems to always skew their games as low as possible. Slant, slant it, slants it low. It's That's the right. Name. It's the name. They're just, they're rolling with it. I don't know. It just, that seems kind of annoying. I get, I get it, but I also am like, hmm, really? Really? Again? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I'm still interested. I want to check it out. Um, the first one was intriguing to me. I played a little bit of it and it ran like dog shit on my PS4. Yeah. Way to go. Enough of that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in it as well. Um, definitely be something I 
will probably rent, but not definitely not buying it. Renny, you're standing at Redbox, and you have the choice between Evil Within 2 or Middle Earth Shadow of War. Which one do you rent? I'd probably pick Shadow of War. Really? Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> Something about Shadow of War, I'm just... Maybe I'd really like it. I'm I don't not, know. To be honest, I'm not really interested in either one of them. Yeah. Um, I... I don't know. I am interested if I really think about it, but not enough to go out of my way at all. If mm-hmm. I just happen to be by a red box and I just happen to not have anything to do that night, I might. <laughs> if I feel like taking the effort to walk over to the machine, but I don't know. I'm just if I play it, great. You if know, I don't play it, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So. So, Brandon, we do have a game to guess on this week. It's one that I don't know. I mean, I know a significant amount about it, but I'm also unsure. And is South Park the Fractured Butthole? I did play a little bit of the first one, and I loved what I played. I just, other things came up. But what's interesting is that they, the amount of time and effort that it goes into these South Park, the at least the two, you know, yeah, uh, Sick of Truth and now Fractured Butthole, surprising amount. Uh, and Matt and Trey are very involved with the development of these games. Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the show itself, and I'd never got a chance to play the first one, and I've heard you talk about it some, and I see a ton of people on Reddit that are super excited for this game. Um, I guess the collector's edition has, like, a giant cardman. Oh. Dressed up as Coon. Okay. In France. I like that. But um, but no, man, I'm, this is definitely something that... I have on my radar. I'm not 100% sure how to feel about it, but I know I love South Park enough that I'd probably be willing to give it a chance. Is it uh, uh, at least worth a rental, you'd assume? I I mean, if nothing else, I'm probably more excited for this than I am for Shadow of Mordor or Mm -hmm. Evil Within, but I don't know. I wonder what the last one scored, actually. Uh, Let me look. I can get you the answer to that. But yeah, it's interesting. I can't believe working on both... uh, both doing the show and working on the game at the same time. And it's crazy because it's so topical. Like, they make the show as it's coming out, right? Yeah. Because they talk about stuff that happens, like, the week before. Mm-hmm. So they're working on, like, g- getting this game out and doing the new season. And and then, I don't know, I'm sure that Matt and Trey, I mean, they've done other projects like uh, Book of Mormon and stuff yeah. like that. Like, man, busy dudes. Yeah. Now, granted, they're not doing South Park year round. Yeah, it, no, it comes sure. on and but. off. But uh, South Park, the Stick of Truth, rated eighty six. Wow, that's a pretty good score. That is really especially good, for like you. You think about it like as a you. The gut reaction is to think about it like a licensed game. Yeah, which is instantly you think trash. <laughs> but for the most part, we seem to be out. There's no longer like licensed garbage games. Those are now reserved more for mobile than anything else. Yeah. Right. Uh, of course, we got a couple like that Ghostbusters game <laughs> last year. Yeah. It's just like, what? <laughs> what happened? Awful. Yeah. Cars. So, cars. Oh, dude. Ta- Phil. Phil's you, favorite. Fucker, Phil. <laughs> Phil, uh, <laughs> Phil, one of our writers, bought. Uh, it's called License to Win. Wow. I'm pretty sure it's called License to Win. Wow. Yeah. Phil. Uh, hey, it, it has pretty good driving mechanics. Phil's like, yeah, it's actually really, really nice, g- good gameplay. It's just fun, okay? Just fun. He's listening to this car right now. He's, he's what was it the other day? <laughs> oh yeah, we were talking about how last week we almost forgot. Uh, so behind the scenes of the show, <laughs> I almost forgot to go over. Uh, we, we almost forgot to guess on Evil Within, and I made some quick cuts so it, you couldn't even tell that we forgot and moved yeah. on. Anyway, we had imagined if if we had let it go and Phil was listening in his car driving and then it's like, okay, and see you in, and moving on without guessing on Evil Within after we had led up to it. Phil's like, what the fuck? He, he just, drives it, off the side of the road. the car off the road. Turns. Anger tweets. <laughs> you guys fucking per- Not that Phil's ever done that or anything like that. It was just... It's just fun in our head. Yeah. Phil. We love you, Phil. Can't get enough of that guy. Damn. Whoa. That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's it for uh, name that review score. I don't think there's anything, no, nothing abnormal popping up in the recently reviewed. Uh, Persona Five has retaken its number two spot on the 2017 Hall of Fame for some reason. Divinity was creeping around in there. Divinity though, in Persona Five, is sharing the same score of 94. I don't like that. Divinity, get the fuck out of here. Hmm. Persona Five, number two game. It's actually, uh, hmm, if I had to think Persona 5 or Breath of the Wild, which one's better? Speaking of reviews, I don't know if this holds like any validity at all. 
Mm-hmm. I don't even know if I use that word correctly. But I saw this thing on Reddit where somebody put two review scores beside each other. They were both from Polygon, it looked like. Yeah. And one was like an 8.25 uh-huh. for Infinite Warfare. And then one was like a six for Divinity <laughs> Original Sin. Oh, yeah. Like, Here's the thing about that, though. And they, I, I get why it's funny. They were 100% written. Like, the reviews were by different people. I saw yeah. the author. But still, I just thought... like <laughs> I get it why people think it's funny and they call out. They're like, especially these Sonic boys. Yeah. that uh, We joke about that on the live show about Sonic fanboys and stuff like that. But they will get up in arms because uh, IGN reviewed Sonic. They gave it an eight. This game. And then on a podcast, someone's like, Sonic has never been good. It's like, it's not like these companies are sitting around a board table like, okay, what's our collective opinion about every game? And it has to be consistent between every person. It's like, come on. It's not a cult. Exactly. See, if we had to put out a score, you know, maybe what if we reviewed Neo and you reviewed it and gave it a 10 and I'm like, Neo's fucking shit. It gets a 4.0. If I had to review Neo, if I had to give it a score, right from my gut. Yeah. My gut says like seven. That's fair. Because it a lot of it's good. That's fair. Just uncreative. That's very fair. I'd give it like a eight point seven five. Eight whoa. Seven five. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Quarter scores. <laughs> All right. So there is no you done fucked up this week because I didn't the only thing anyone wants to talk about right now is loot boxes, which we will be getting a tiny bit into loot boxes during our news. Um, but I just don't want to talk about loot boxes anymore. You know it, what I mean? It's it's super funny. I was I don't know, and I know that we were like a part of this. And Thus we, begins loot box conversation. Right, right. That's fine. I don't no, care. No, no, no. it's it, it, it it's like meta almost. Like how I follow a lot of people on Twitter that are like game people, right? Yeah. And I just think it's really funny when it feels like everyone gets on a side about something, and then mm-hmm. everyone just mm-hmm. like. I see, like, my, my entire timeline is filled up with, what do we think about this loot box? What do we think about this? What do we think about this? And then for a while, I was like, Cuphead, 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 Cuphead. Oh, and then it's yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, as soon as, I don't know, it, it's just so weird how, like, some people, I don't know. I mean, it's called, it's like, it's called the the gaming epic echo chamber or whatever. It's yeah, an, it's, yeah. And it's and just it, like. It, it, it is news, and it's like, I don't know. I just think it's funny how, how some things will be just destroying my timeline for a little bit <laughs> did you see i don't know i th- oh yeah there was a a youtube video on reddit that was like k- bringing up all these journalists that were like cuphead is really like it's a lot like dark souls I saw that More like dark souls <laughs> and it's like there's this thing now that any game that is difficult it's gets like compared dark to dark souls it's Even like no it's nothing no. like dark souls you know what game is like dark souls bloodborne L- bloodborne you know and or like <laughs> lords of the fallen yeah. like yeah that game is literally <laughs> like dark souls <laughs> There are games that have Dark Souls elements. You could say, like, you know, if you get if you die, you got to go pick up your currency. You know, that's a yeah. Dark Souls <laughs> element. It doesn't mean the game is like Dark Souls. Kill confirmed in Call of Duty, like Dark Souls, because like, you have to pick up your tag after you die. What did somebody? I, one of the things in that video was someone said that Lawbreakers was the Dark Souls of first person shooters. I was like, what the fuck what does, does that, that mean? mean? Yeah, but yeah. Like, oh I want to be handsome phantom. It's like the dark souls of games journalism. What do you think about that? No, we might be onto something Han- with that. Handsome phantom is the love letter to being like the dark souls. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it, it's a love letter to being like dark souls. Wow uh, of of the podcast world. I don't even know what to say to that right also now. Also Minecraft. Also a lot like Minecraft. It- <laughs> procedurally, the procedurally generated love letter. <laughs> To being like Dark Souls. Also Creepers. Yes. I just want to like tag Minecraft on the end of anything I say to just hope to get like the... Dude, the kid army. The, oh, you, you, the, gotta, the, you, you gotta get the kid the, army. The, you got Minecraft on your phone, <laughs> right? The millions of children around the world. That's right. There, there. You know, we talked about that for trying to get the untapped children market, the kid in, market. into this show. <laughs> or, um, you know... It, just start talking about Five Nights at Freddy's a lot. Oh, dude... It's everywhere. Can't say fuck anymore. You know what I think is funny is um, there's still Five Nights at Freddy's stuff everywhere. It's crazy. You would think you see it, it at GameStop. Off. You see it at freaking Hot Topic, which, you know, more and more. Every time for the last like five years, every time I walk into to- Hot Topic, I hate it more. But of course, they do have like some nice game yeah. stuff that's cool. Yeah. But man, every time I walk in there, I'm like, mm, no. So 
Anyway, let's go ahead. Uh, we'll take a little break. When we come back, we'll talk about the news and uh, talk about what we've been playing. We'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, Brandon, I'm just feeling like full right now. Yeah, I feel... We just completely gorged ourselves on Chinese, which here's the thing. Chinese, you th- great decision before, great decision during. Have you ever been like, wow, I feel great after that Chinese food? Said no, no one. Said nobody. Said nobody. Um, no, I not only feel full because of, you know, the rice and mm-hmm. the chacon, mm-hmm. but, um, I've, this is now like my second large cup. Like I've, I just feel like I'm like sloshing in my chair <laughs> yeah. here. You know what I mean? Like some guttural noises are happening mm. over here. My guy. That's the thing is that <sighs> that's why I need to get better control of like, Hey, I need to stop eating. Like. I'm I'm a hundred percent full. Yeah, just like Brandon, just stop, stop being it. such a fat sloth motherfucker, like glutton. Dude, just, just fucking stop. You're not hungry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I. Uh, so Holly and I, it was our anniversary uh, earlier this week, and we went to a place in Cranberry, and it was a, a place that had a bunch of different beers on tap. Mm. Whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, Holly and I were not appetizer people. We're very frugal when we go out to eat. We got an appetizer. Okay, it's our fucking anniversary. Treat yourself. Got the appetizer, which was pulled pork cheese fries. That sounds amazing. Damn. That sounds really good. I got a burger and I got some a little some beers. Mm-hmm. And I the the food was so salty. Okay. Mm-hmm. So not only did I, I drink the beer. Domino's salty? Maybe more. But here's what's oh funny. God. I I was I was drinking water, you know, I drank some water. <laughs> I drank, I got a drink of sheets on the way home of some more. I got like a bubbly, fizzy water, the Perrier. Yeah. Got home, drank like two or three more glasses of water because I was just so fucking thirsty. Yeah. And then like I'm getting ready for bed and I took off my shirt and I was like, holy shit, I'm so bloated right now. I look over, I'm like, Holly, I feel pretty bloated. She's like, Dustin, you look bloated. Like my stomach was just <laughs> like, it was like a balloon in my stomach. And that's that's because that salt, Damn. that salt will help, will keep, make you retain water. It was just like. Damn. All the water weight, dude. All that water weight, you gotta, you gotta get rid of it. Damn, dude. That's the first thing that happens when you uh, start to diet. You lose all that water weight. Just stop. Just don't drink water ever. It, you don't gain weight then. No water weight. Well, honestly, best idea I've ever had. I don't. I. It's foolproof. It's hard to argue with. <laughs> the logic is sound. <laughs> you heard it first here. So, Brandon, I'm just gonna. I already know what you've been playing. I'm just gonna ask you straight up. The new. Overwatch Halloween event is here. Let's go. Tell me about um, it. So, no, yeah, it's more of what it was last year. In fact, I'm actually slightly disappointed. Okay. Tell me. Believe Tell me not. more. So, I they, they have added some new stuff, right? But with the other events, like, for instance, Lucio Ball, there was a new map. Junkenstein's Revenge, same map. Different game mode. There the is endless di- mode. There is a different game mode. It's endless but it's in the same map location. So that makes it feel a little bit stale, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I wish we could have been like maybe at a different part of Eichenwald or something like that, or like, you know, like a different part of the map. Mm-hmm. That would have been cool. Yeah. Um, it's not bad. That's just something that I wish they would have done. But it's fine the way it is. Um, Junkenstein's Revenge, really cool. I think it's really fun to play the PvE because sometimes you just don't want to play PvP, and that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I, the skins somehow keep getting better. I don't know. I really liked the Halloween skins last year, but this year's even better. They just keep they keep making quality skins. Yeah. You'd think they'd run out of ideas or something. I guess not. Brandon, from as I, I don't consider myself an outsider to Overwatch, but I haven't been in, in, as involved probably the last six months. Yeah. So uh, May was the one-year anniversary, correct? May what? Just sometime in May. I thought the game oh, came out in May. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant M E I. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> like, May, the month of May. I think was, that's how you spell her name. Is uh, May. yeah, is, was the one year anniversary. So we're now May, June, July, August, September, year, October. Year five two. months. Yeah. Five months into year two, almost halfway through the year, and I, I can't help but as like I said, outsider looking in that this year maybe has been a little stale for Overwatch. Yeah. So far. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm trying to think of the release window because dates are like something I'm really bad with of the other characters. Um, the last person we got was Doomfist. Did he come out this year? Or this year within year two of Overwatch is what I should say. 
That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know. I can't I'm, remember the I'm exact so timeline. I'm so bad with dates, and they all just kind of blur together. But anyway, um, I I can agree with and disagree with that because your one was so fun, right? Because we it was all new. We didn't know what events were coming, um, you know. And honestly, at this point, I don't get more enjoyment out of new characters. It's really events that get me excited more. Mm-hmm. Um, like, for instance, when Arissa first dropped, I didn't even play for a while. Um, I just happened... I, I think event an event dropped around when Doomfist dropped, and so I just happened to play then. But, um, but no, yeah, I definitely can see what you mean by that. I wonder if there will ever be a time when they deviate from the events and say, hey, this is something different. Or if they're just going to like, this is the formula and we just do this. Um, so, so far it seems like they're just sticking with the formula, which isn't bad because they've still put out like consistently different things. That's not exactly the same every single event. Um, but who knows? I mean, I think it's just going to continue to change throughout year two. And um, I really don't know what they're going to do next. So I'd be curious if right now, if we're getting slightly different events because they are working on something big big behind the scenes like uh not that i you know there's always the talk about will they ever do an overwatch campaign i'm not holding my breath for it right yeah, now I, don't, I, don't I really feel like though they're on to something with pve yeah sort of like junk and signs revenge well, i mean dude they they always said that they weren't really interested in doing team deathmatch and now it's a permanent game mode in arcade right mm-hmm. or free for all or whatever yeah so um, I they're definitely willing to do things that they said they weren't going to do before, mm-hmm. and I feel like PVE is definitely a part of that. And I feel like the ad- the events do well, yeah. So it would make sense to have some sort of PVE thing. It wouldn't be that difficult to just make it on other maps. They've shown mm-hmm. that they're willing to adapt other maps to fit, you know, just edit some of the way the maps are, in order to have them fit these different game modes. You know, I feel like they were really onto something with that um, scenario based mission. Um, the one that you play as like the retro, the old school yeah. Overwatch team. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no, it that was the anniversary event. Okay, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So I feel like that's definitely cool. If if we could continue, so let's say we got a couple PVE modes and they were like on rotation, but we got more lore like that with different characters. Like, hey, this is how these characters interacted with each other, and maybe here's like a skin or something like Mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? I feel like that's something that I've honestly never thought of and I thought was really cool when it came out that we would get to know some of these interactions between the like beginning members of Overwatch. So that that definitely would be interesting. I am curious. uh, So I didn't put this in the news because there's very little validity, but we can talk about it anyway. Uh, Blizzard put out a search for they have a job opening and they want a designer or something like that that part of the requisite is to know they want prior knowledge to the Overwatch universe as if they might be hiring for some sort of Overwatch project. Yeah. Uh, Which I'm curious on what that would be whether they are making they want to make more games in the Overwatch universe. Yeah. Maybe they want to do something like Hearthstone only for Overwatch, which could be cool, uh, which for some reason I just thought of. I was thinking of like, I, I think that they wouldn't want to do something like Hearthstone, Overwatch. You know what I mean? Well, like, I, mean, uh, it, it, I feel like it would be stupid to do two card games. It's enough. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know about necessarily a new game, but something different that's not exactly like Overwatch, maybe. Mm-hmm. Even if they didn't release something in the Overwatch game themselves. But what if they came out with like a $40 thing that was like, hey, this is sort of like a campaign in the Overwatch universe. Dude, here's okay. Here's my dream. I just mm-hmm. thought of here's my game idea, Brandon. I want uh, an Overwatch game that is like XCOM, sort of. Imagine that, and each character had unique abilities. It's, you know, Reaper needs to be. He only he has a. He's able to move up real close to enemies and then fire yeah. and then like you know fade away. And I mean, honestly, th- the best sort part of- about this amazing universe they've made is that you could put mold it into so many different things and it would mm. work. I mean, they, they've even showed that with heroes of the storm, oh, adding yeah. all of these overwatch characters that just fit with the powers. They already pretty much have some of them are slightly different, but yeah. they pretty much just have them. And, um, no, I think it's definitely something that's really cool. I'm ready to give more money to blizzard uh-huh. for anything overwatch. Yeah. So if they want to make, if, if they like say, Hey, we want to make something else. 
I will give them $40, $20 for DLC. You know, not that I think it would make sense for them to do DLC, but I would do that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I would I would be there. It's one, interesting. So. Um, and I think, you know, Blizzard has shown us, you know, well known for either their RTS or MMO, the MMO, you know, World of Warcraft. Yeah. And then they're coming out of nowhere doing a first person shooter. Just shows that they're willing to make any type of game that they think will work for them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to think about other types of games, like, you know, in that Overwatch world. I still think, yeah, like the tactical RPG uh, that's sort of like XCOM, man, that could be cool. I'm trying to think, what other game types do you think would work? Or uh, I mean, I game can... genres? Walking really? simu- Dating simulator? <laughs> dating simulator, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Winston. Uh, Wow. Hello. M- monkey boy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm really excited to see what happens more in year two. I will continue to play this game probably for, like, I don't know. It t- I, I don't know when I'm going to stop playing because it's going to be able to be something that I'm never actually going to fully put down because I've started playing Seasons in Overwatch and that's just something that, like, I, I, I could say that I did that because that's so awesome that, like, I've played every single season, at least I've placed and... I want to check out every event, and unlike where Destiny, where I was like, "Oh well, if I miss an event, whatever." Like, I want to check out every single event, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. Speaking of Destiny, I wonder if they're going to do their um, Halloween event this I was, year. I was actually talking about that. Uh, obviously, I don't think they are. Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, it's halfway through October. Um, you would have thought that they would have already done it. It's the Festival of Light. It is Halloween themed. Yeah. Right. So it's not like they could wait get, getting closer to November because then you get into some weird, unless they wanted to make it a more fall event than Halloween. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. They just dropped Iron Banner. Yeah. So and that can kind of go into what I'm also playing is Destiny Two, I guess. But Iron Banner is fine. Um, I really enjoyed the armor, and the more I think about it, the more I think it's just meh. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the armor though. I the design on the armor is is top notch. Makes me want to play multiplayer, even though I'm not super into PvP because yeah. I want that fucking armor. You know what I mean? And uh, definitely more casual than Trials, which is nice because Trials can be really Trials of the Nine. Uh, the more competitive, uh, re- revive based game mode can be really really intense, uh, and it's nicer to play a more competitive feeling game mode, but not it it be so tense. Mm-hmm. You know, so, um. Yeah, I, I really haven't played very much recently of Destiny 2, and I'm not worried about it. I mean, I'm still interested in what the expansions are going to yeah. be, but I think I'm ready to to put it away. That's fine. For now. Yeah. Uh, and come back to it later when there's new content. Yeah, no, so. for sure. I mean, we had some good times with it. Um, it it's going to be something I'm going to continue to play um, just because I've only completed the raid twice. Um, I'm still very, very interested in a lot of what the raid has to offer. And I still just find it really fun to play a mindless game because that's really mm-hmm. what it is to me. And that's the best part about Destiny is it feels so mindless to me most of the time. I don't know why, but it just feels like I just shoot things. I get loot. That's exciting every once in a while. I'm just shooting things and listening to music on yeah. Spotify on my PS4. It just uh, feels relaxing to me. Hmm. So Interesting. And, it, and, and it's a nice social experience. So. Yeah. Well, Brandon, I've still been playing a lot of Stardew Valley and it, Oh man, I haven't played a game that's addicting like this. It's very much like when you're playing civilization and you've got to keep playing to get that one more turn in. You just want to do one more day in Stardew Valley. I'm almost, I'm almost married now. Fantastic. Uh, how many ice cream cones did it take? How many beers? No, how many beers? Well, I figured out the girl, my, my waifu is, uh, Abigail. And of course, she likes the beers, but I figured out that she likes. So there's things that characters love, like, and love. Mm-hmm. So the love will, will get you further. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So she likes amethyst, which is like a purple stone. Yeah. So when I found those, I'd give them to her. She but has purple hair too, doesn't she? That's right. Yeah. Damn, dude. So, but the other thing she likes is pumpkins. And it was fall. And so basically, I just got a shit, t- I grew a shit ton of pumpkins and then like kept them and would give them to her two every week. <laughs> I just like to think she just has a room full of the shit that you give her. Yeah. Like, just, it just piles up. It's funny, too, what people like and don't like. You mentioned the ice cream. And 
I had ice cream the other day, and I tried to give it to somebody, and they're like, "What am I supposed to do with this?" I was Eat like, it, "Bitch, what the fuck is wrong? If you don't like fucking ice cream, it wasn't Abigail." Say no thanks. Yeah, it's just I understand. You maybe can, she's lactose intolerant. Maybe you maybe you triggered her. I might have uh, something. It's funny because I understand. Like you can give people trash in a game, and they're like, "What? What, what is this?" <laughs> I understand that, but like, dude. <sighs> That's it's ice I, cream. That's something I appreciate about Stardew Valley, I guess, is how, like, um, I remember this one screenshot specifically that you talk to a girl and she's like, ooh, no. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's like <laughs> they just completely reject you. I keep giving stuff to Linus. Linus is Stardew Valley's hobo, Pelican Town's hobo. He lives out in a <laughs> tent. And <laughs> what's funny about Linus is sometimes he'll spend his day, he'll go up near the, the bathhouse, yeah. he'll just stand staring at the wall. And I'll go and talk to him. He's like, oh, would you come over here to ridicule me? I'm like, dude, I give you food like at least <laughs> once a week. And he'll be like, I, I've been down in the caves. There's some crazy stuff down there. You got to be careful. I'm like, okay, dude. Wow. Just keep staring at that wall. Wow. I don't know. I keep giving. He's, he's I'm hoping that I'm hoping that there's some sort of like you know you can befriend him and something like that. And you could marry Linus. Give him. Give, you can't marry Linus. Give him a proper home. Give him a proper home. Maybe. Damn. You can't marry. Well, it's interesting. There's some people you can and can't marry. I think it would be interesting if they let you like they don't. You can't marry the mayor. Okay, Mr. Mayor. It's, I can't remember what his name it's is. It's for power. Lewis. Lewis is the mayor. It's for power. It's That's a power move. You want to be... <laughs> I want to be the mayor. Okay, I'm, I've played a lot of Animal Crossing. <laughs> Animal Crossing, you're the fucking mayor. I want to be the mayor of Pelican Town. Damn. I'm going to take out Lewis. You have to. You have to hire the hobo. Nobody will care if the hobo dies. No one cares. Yeah. <laughs> Sardew Valley murder mystery mod. Wow. Schizophrenic. I, That's why he stares at the wall. He's going cuckoo. He's losing it. He must He killed be. the mayor. Maybe he wow blame it, dude. Oh no! Here's the setup. You got to kill Lewis the mayor and somehow blame it on the hobo. You got to set him up. Yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying. And then see. You say, look how crazy this guy is. He stares at the wall all day. Exactly. Wow. I was trying to figure out. I'm like, I know you can mod. There's a lot of mods on PC. So there is the hot spring or the like the hot bath that you can go in, and your character wears a little speedo. I'm like, I need to figure out a way. I want to wear this speedo. All, All the time, time in the game. <laughs> you got to get the characters. It's like freaking Breath of the Wild. Yeah. They, they react to you differently. Like, you know? <sighs> yeah. Oh, you just reminded me that that Breath of the Wild DLC is coming out this Damn. year. You think you're going to... Well, you haven't beaten the game. I haven't beaten the game. I really need to pick it back up. I've I've been doing other things. Uh, I've been playing my Switch here and there. I actually bought Stardew Valley. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, speaking of... I bought Stardew Valley. I'm really confused about it. I, I know it's... It, it is confusing it's at first. It's not like I'm doing anything wrong, necessarily. I just don't... I'm going to play it more. Mm -hmm. I'm just playing other things right now. Yeah. So, it's really important that you use the Stardew Valley wiki. Yeah. Especially if you have questions, figure out what you need to do. And the, part of the fun of Stardew Valley, to me, is figuring things out. Yeah. And I will look stuff up here and there, but... um. Sometimes it's like, oh, I need this item to build this. I'm like, well, I don't know how to get that item. And then eventually later, I'll figure out how to get yeah. that item. And it's like, yeah. oh, cool. That's, hmm. how, that's how it's done. Nice. So I've been playing this other really strange game. Brandon, you saw a little bit of this game. And it's been making it some very it's making some waves on the internet. And it's called Doki Doki Literature Club. And it's a game about where it's like, well, it's like a, Is it a game. I'd say it's a game. <laughs> it's yeah, it's an interactive book book that you play on your computer. It's a game. There's choices to be made, but it's it's a game that's like a dating, sort of like a dating sim, like a visual novel. But you're this guy, and you're in this. You're invited to join this literature club with. There's there's three, uh, well no, four different girls there, and things get weird. Okay, it takes about an hour, but. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much in case anyone's interested in playing this because it's a totally free game. Just search Doki Doki Literature Club. When you start the game up, it says warning. There's content not suitable for for, for children in this game. Uh, it says something like there's distur disturbing content. Beware. Doesn't say beware, but you know what I mean. So I've only experienced part of it, and I can I can attest to just Kotaku's headline for this game was. Uh, 
Doki Doki Literature Club scared me shitless. <laughs> and there's nothing that has scared me shitless, but there has definitely... It gets super freaky weird. Yeah, it's just... It's, it's not scary to me. It's just like... It makes you feel eerie. Like creepy crawly it just it, yeah it's it's just which weird more than scary like just dude creepy weird is so much better than scary like jump scares and yeah. stuff like that which oh man creepy creepy weird is worse to me yeah than jump scares <laughs> Cause it, just gnaws, like, it just gnaws at you, you know what yeah I mean? and Cause then you, like because jump scares like oh you know yeah like, and then it's oh, over like you're scared all at once but creepy's like you just think about it and you're like what the fuck was you're that like laying in bed at night thinking about like all oh, that creepy weird shit yeah. you know what i mean so it's totally free. Uh, it's worth if you're if you're willing to the it has a slow burn at the beginning, but I think it's necessary for when things start getting. There's got to be some setup. Oh yeah, there's some setup. Uh, which I think Brandon, we're, you and I are gonna have to dive back into that a little Please. bit after this because sure. uh, I'm I'm intrigued about what other strange things will happen. Uh, other than that, I've been playing that and I've been playing Stardew Valley and. I don't know, man. I'm still. I'm just getting excited for Mario Odyssey and Wolfenstein too. Damn, Counting down the I, days. I keep forgetting Wolfenstein's coming out really soon too. I'm actually very unexcited about it for whatever reason, dude. I think it's because I play. I platinumed Wolfenstein one so soon ago mm-hmm. that I and the old blood kind of just. I kind of burnt myself out, mm-hmm. and so I'm not super excited. Yeah. I don't know. I am really excited. I didn't. I went back and played like the first quarter of the first game, or of you know, yeah, New Order, and it was enough to wet the liquor, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I, Wolfenstein won one of my favorite games of all time at this mm-hmm. point. Um, amazing journey, and I just think that I played the other one so recently that I'm not like foaming at the mouth. But mm-hmm. once it comes out, I'll be ready. I keep. I saw another part of the part where you're on the conveyor belt shooting stuff. Oh, that was part yeah. of the E3. I'm like, yeah. man, that looks so cool. Yeah. I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to get it on PS4 or my PC. But then I think about, well, the PS4 version, I'm sure it's going to be 60 frames per second. Yeah. All that good stuff. The other one performs super well. So I yeah. I, I don't see why this one would be any different. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a difficult thing that day with both that and Mario yeah. being out. <laughs> Especially and if you're an Assassin's Creed fan... It's going to be even rougher day. If you like all three of those things, then you're fucked. R.I.P. Wallet. Yep, R.I.P. Okay, Brandon, let's go ahead and get into the news. Uh, Number one, actually, there's only two two news items. That's okay. Also, okay, the other thing I've been playing, Danganronpa. That's it. I don't want to report on anything. I told you last week it's crazy. Still playing it. And check it out if you like it. Anyway, news item number one. Open Critic. He's taking a stand against loot boxes. I wanted to boil down the most... There's so many loot box things going on right now. I wanted to boil it down to the most interesting thing. Okay, a solution, right? Everyone's talking about the problems. Let's get some solutions, okay? That's what I want to publicize. Doesn't You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's easy to criticize things. Mm-hmm. It's and best the- to offer to offer some sort of active solution. This isn't even necessarily a solution, but it's a step in the right direction. Here's their quotes from their Twitter. They said, we're going to take a stand against loot boxes. We're looking into ways to add business models into business model information to open critic. Uh, let us know your thoughts on how we can categorize and display business model intrusiveness on game pages in a fair and scalable way. And they went into some detail about some potential ways that they could do that. But I think this is really interesting um, to display. There's so there's so many different types of loot boxes as far yeah. as how they work, whether they're cosmetic, whether or not how necessary they are to being not necessary at all, right? And so it'll be interesting to see how they scale that. Uh, Open Critic, as we mentioned before, we are have a partnership with them as far as our reviews go under their site for uh, as contributors. Um, and hopefully eventually as, as cr- actual critics, but I'm curious about what role, um, going forward, what role loot boxes should play into the criticism of a game. Yeah. And I wonder if that means that there's going to be like a separate scale or if it's going to factor into the overall score, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because they could do either one. Um, I just think it's really, 
a good move for Open Critic business wise. Yeah. I don't know, like as as a website. It was headlines. Be, it was good headlines well, for them. And I mean, but it's good publicity because what they're doing I think is good. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I I think that most people would agree that it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, except for the people that don't that put them in there. You know yeah. what I mean? But um but no, I think it's really cool that they're kind of ahead of the pack on this because I feel like this is going to be something that a lot of other people are going to do too if this sort of trend in gaming persists. People care about this. I mean, there wouldn't be so many head- headlines if people didn't want to read about it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's cool that Open Critic is kind of uh, flying out of the pack in this case. Uh, so I just wonder, what's interesting is that the people who like, like the people that are deep, balls deep in games they're the ones that are going to open critic not yeah. your average joe that plays madden and picks up a couple different yeah. games uh, the question is are the hardcore it seems like the hardcore gamers that are upset about this aren't the ones that are spending the money who's spending the money on all these microtransactions on these loot boxes kids. is it kids tap into the kids money i'm telling you got to tap into the kids money <laughs> there's something uh i heard this described it's like there are what the industry calls whales, yeah. right? Where, yeah, there might be millions of fish in this ocean of gamers, yeah. but it's the whales, the big ones that count, and the people that buy loot boxes buy them in droves. And so even though the millions and millions might be against it, it doesn't matter because the whales are the ones spending the money and making it worth it. We gotta start whaling. Dude, take them out. <laughs> oh my God. Enough. Enough. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting going forward. It seems like now that a lot of the dust has settled, well, maybe half of we're in the eye of the storm right now, right? Because we still have got Battlefront and Call of Duty and some more big ones to come out this year. But with the ones that have been released, uh, it's mostly, it seems like, been okay. Shadow of War may have been a little... It wasn't as bad as people expected, I yeah. think, for Shadow of War. And I wonder if that's they changed it after the criticism. It makes you, I don't know. It makes you wonder, you know what I mean? So the big one, though, the biggest offense of the year has been that NBA, which you'd have to assume with all the negative backlash next year, they're going to be have to be on the forefront. Because think of every interview where they're going to be like, hey, uh, last year I had a lot of uh, complaints about loot boxes. What do you What is your response to that with this year's game? I mean, not that this is necessarily the same, but I feel like 2K is just putting out shit games recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I saw today on Twitter was Twitter was trending that uh, WWE 2K18 had some crazy shitty glitches. Did you really? See this? Well, that game's not. It's not even out yet, is it? Or I thought it was. No, you might be right. The reviews. Well, there is one review out. Um, I was seeing some crazy glitches on some WWE, but I don't know. I just keep, I feel like I keep just seeing weird things about 2K18, 2K this, 2K that. And it's just, what's going on? I don't know. It'll be curious to see going forward what's going to happen. Brandon, number two. Uh, Oculus Rift has had a new permanent price drop. The headset and the touch controllers are now $399 total. Uh, Oculus has also announced they are working on a new type of headset called Oculus Go that does not need a computer or phone to work. Uh, the headset That headset will release in 2018 and will be $199. Hmm. I think this mobile headset is going to be garbage. I think it's going to probably just be like mobile games. Like the mobile VR games. Yeah. That, and you don't need a phone. Yeah. They said it's supposed to be somewhere between the phone and the actual headset. I'm not. I'm, I'm calling bullshit. I think it's going to be closer to the one side. I think it's going to be better optics. So the visual, as far as like the the way the optics and headset feels, it will feel more like the Rift. But I'm like, I'm just like, what kind of graphics? Like, what are we really talking as far as an all in one headset? You know what I mean? Well, that's nice. I I don't know. I feel like they're just going to get keep getting cheaper to make. Mm -hmm. Um, Makes you wonder if they're just going to keep getting cheaper and cheaper and fade out of existence. Yeah. If they're just going to get cheaper and cheaper and more people are going to buy them. You know what I mean? They have to compete now because uh, Microsoft is releasing their own headsets in partnership with like Samsung and stuff like that. And I believe those are $300 as well. Oh, really? And I'm wondering what, uh, what kind of game compatibility as far as will they all be able to work universally or I don't know. Hard to tell. I'm interested in getting a PC headset for sure. I'm more interested in the vibe, though. I think. 
Yeah, um, I remember you had said you had tried both actually, and you had a better experience with the Vive. Yeah, the Vive. Yeah, the Vive is super cool. It's just the Vive has not gone down in price. It's still seven hundred dollars. I'm like, which is just the headset. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, once it's just the headset. Just the headset. You need that yeah. computer and you need the space. Right. So, and Brandon, that's that's it for the news. That's I guess all, that, folks. That's it for the show. We're done a little early today. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. No, no prob. But uh, Brandon, I had a good time. I had a great time. I'm still feeling very, very full from that Chinese man. I'm just like yeah, I feel a little, I feel like a roly poly boy. R- roly poly. That's right. Roll, roll out of here. Yeah. Well, let's let's go ahead and do that. This has been Adventure Mode with Dustin and Brandon. Thanks everybody for joining us. Either whether it's on iTunes or Google Play or over on YouTube.com. We appreciate having you around. And uh, make sure to go to handsomephantom.com. Brandon, I almost forgot again in one tweet. I keep almost forgetting. The final segment of the show. Son of a bitch. Um, but, uh, okay, let's do in one tweet then, real quick. My, I've been a bad host boy the past two <laughs> weeks in a row now. Um, in one tweet. So in one tweet, it's a part of the show we go over uh, the... Uh, Every week, I put out a question on Twitter, either on my personal page or on a Handsome Phantom Twitter account. I ask one question, mm-hmm. okay? And um, Brandon, remember how I was like, I don't want to talk about loot boxes. Well, here we are talking about it a third time Welcome this week. Welcome back. This was this was a couple days ago, so it wasn't, you know, it was a little more fresh, right? I said in one tweet, "Are you worried about the future of AAA games with the recent loot box trend?" Uh, our friend John the Messenger, being a smart aleck here. Uh, he says, any games that require AAA batteries worry me because sometimes they get left on. Batteries are expensive, dot, dot, dot. What's a loot box? So John doesn't know anything about games. He's being a funny boy. <laughs> At Lord Carnita says, no, publishers will evolve their ways to make an extra buck on their games. I will like I w- like them to keep games at $60. So he's saying, keep the loot boxes and keep the games the same price instead of getting rid of the loot boxes and raising the price of games. At Unsexist Comedy says, no, the market will speak for itself. If this is what people want, then the silent majority will demand it with their wallet. And finally, at the Indie Boy One says, yes, as bad impl- implementations ruin games and make loads of money, so is going uh, so is going nowhere. However, However, works great in Rocket League as trade crates for as trade crates for key. I don't know anything about the Rocket League yeah. implementation. Yeah, it's it, it's very weird. Um, I played Rocket League a couple times, and people just spam you because they have a chat in Rocket League to trade mm-hmm. shit. Um, I don't like it. Some people might like it, but you could trade stuff. You can get these keys to unlock certain things. The keys are what you actually pay money for. I don't understand it, but it's weird hmm. to me. Uh, at Spinny RL says, yep, hashtag in one tweet, hashtag also in one word. Wow. Okay. Uh, at Philip Nyman says, I don't know about worried. It made me play. It's made me play and enjoy a lot more single player experiences than I have in the past since I play less multiplayer. Okay. Uh, Heath Detweiler. Det, Det, yeah, Detweiler. He says, I play more hours of less games. That's for sure. That's interesting. Oh, so <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think if he's talking about like because of loot boxes, he plays less games. I, th- I feel like it's up for interpretation. At J.R. Oliver says, uh, I'm worried about the current state of games, let, al- let alone the future. This was predicted ages ago and no one listened. Now it's everywhere. I can see that. There's been a lot of warning signs, you know, in the past couple of years with the cosmetics, people saying it's going to bleed into our gameplay. He's right. Here it is. The prophecy. Uh, the prophecy was true. <laughs> Damn. So, okay, so now that now it's actually time for the end of the show uh, of Adventure Mode. So thanks again, everybody, for coming, hanging out with us. Uh, you can make sure to follow the show on Twitter at Handsome Phantom. Just search it. You'll find it. You can follow me personally. I'm at Dustin Can't Fly. And I am at underscore Glorious Ginger. Make sure to go to HandsomePhantom.com. It's a fun place to hang out, have a good time, and read great articles. Until next time, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.